In this video, we're going to take a look at the default SharePoint content placeholders that are used inside of the SharePoint master page. In order to do that, we're first going to need to make sure that SharePoint is opened up to the site that we want to modify. And then, once we've got that open, we're going to go into the folders list and expand the catalogs directory and then expand the master page gallery. Now we're going to deal with the default.master, so we'll double click on it in order to edit it. So content placeholders only appear on master pages, and in order to view them, you need to make sure that empty containers and visible borders are turned on as visual aids. To do that, you'll go to the view menu, into the visual aids menu option here and you just need to make sure that empty containers and visible borders are checked. If they're not, you'll need to turn them on or you won't be able to see the content placeholders. As you can see, I've got placeholder main highlighted now. However, other than hovering over each empty container that you see, it's very difficult to find a content placeholder that you might be looking for if you don't know where it is already. In order to do that, the easiest thing to do is actually to go to the View menu, Toolbars, and then bring up the Master Page Toolbar. Now, you'll see that it is now hovering right here. And what we can do is actually take a look at all of the regions in this drop-down. So it makes it very easy to find the particular placeholder that you're looking for, as you can just scroll through the list of all the placeholders on the page. In this case, why don't we go ahead and choose the placeholder title breadcrumb, and it will automatically jump to that placeholder and highlight it for us on the page. If you want your changes to a content placeholder to apply to the entire site, you would modify that placeholder on the master page. However, you can also modify the placeholder on an individual content page and override the default content that's being supplied by the master page. In order to make a change to the content placeholder, it's as simple as going ahead and we'll choose a different placeholder here. We'll go to the site name simple as just typing in a new site name. In our case, we'll change it to Project Workspace. As you can see, there are many placeholders that are on the default.master page. All of them do something, though some are more important than others. The important thing to keep in mind with content placeholders is that in order for a page that has been tied to a specific master page to be able to be tied to a different master page, all of the same content placeholders must exist in both master pages. If they do not, then the page will not be able to render in a browser and it will display an error instead. We're going to go ahead and take a look at something slightly different. So we're going to save this change and then we're going to actually go down to the default.aspx for this site, which has been created with the default.master. We've brought the default.aspx up to edit. Again, we've got our master page toolbar here, so we'll just go to the placeholder site name. And you'll see that there's a common tasks fly out here, and we can actually go here and create custom content. This will allow us to actually edit the content of the master page placeholder specifically just for this page. So as you can see, this allows me to type in a new site name into the placeholder and customize what the master page would generally send me by default. As you can see, this can be used in more places than just the site name, as you could override the contents of any of the placeholders that are available. 